we're pleased to be joined now by senior advisor to the Texas Rangers, Dayton Moore. Of course, if you're a baseball fan, you know about his time and his tenure with the Kansas City Royals, but it is great to have you here. Congratulations on getting to this point. Before we get into the team, what has the Bruce Bochy effect, Dayton, been on oh, this man. club? Well, it's, it's been fun. It's been fun to watch him lead and, you know, him and Chris Young and, the, you know, they set the tone from the first day in spring training. And, um, you know, all of us together, it, talked about oneness and and the importance of you know winning a world series not just getting here and um, it's been great to watch Boach work and you had Yost too an old an old throwback of Bobby Cox and you know yeah. Bochy's an old throwback you know he's going to use the analytics but he's also going to go by what he sees ex-catcher a lot of experience and I think there's a nice blend with Bochy with these ball games when he manages here Dave. there is and you know one thing you mentioned all those guys whether it be Bobby Cox or Ned Yost Bruce Bochy I mean the, the commonality they have they love being at the ballpark. They love players. Uh, they enjoy being around people. They work hard every day to create pathways for those important relationships to thrive. And and they, but but again, they just love being here. They love being at the ballpark. And and uh, they, and they want information. I mean, Boach wants information. He wants to. He's always thinking about you know how he can construct his lineup in a way that's going to be more impactful and pitching matchups. And and uh, again, he he covets the information. Dayton, we know that Max Scherzer is going to the Hall of Fame. That's a given. He's not necessarily, though, the same Max Scherzer as he was in 2019 when they won with the Nationals. I mean, he's had some good moments, but he's not exactly the same. How short will the leash be on him tonight? Well, I'll, I'll let Boach and, and those guys talk, you know, talk about that. But, uh, you know, it's it's been incredible watching him. I mean, he's extremely smart, highly intelligent pitcher and really, really competitive, as you know. And, you know, I, I, you know, coming back, I mean, nobody expected him to be back mm -hmm. this year, you know, when he, you know, came out with a lat issue. And and to, to his credit, I mean, his determination and his desire to compete is why he's here right now. And I would never put limitations on Max Scherzer. Yeah, we'll see how he does tonight. He pitched pretty well in his ballpark, and, of course, uh, he's, he's familiar with it, and he mm -hmm. pitched well for the Mets in a game in July decently. Uh, you made a good point to us, Dayton, when you walked in here. They do, the Diamondbacks, have a little Kansas City Royal feel to them 2015. They put the ball in play. They don't strike out an awful lot. They're feisty. They play good defense. Team that you're not that familiar with. You had the experience because you had 14-2, so 15 when you beat the Mets. But there is a little some of those characteristics with this Diamondback team based well, on your team. You know, Mike Hazen's an incredible baseball man and um, you know how he's constructed this team and especially for this ballpark action players uh, they obviously have great feel uh, to play the game what they need to do to be successful uh, they're skilled players obviously they run the bases well and fearlessly and their defense is spectacular I mean the, the play Alec Thomas made on Seager in in uh, in game two and you know just sitting there behind home plate and Seager smoked that ball to, to center field and he broke instantly on that ball and ran it down easy and so you know they do a lot of things to put pressure on a baseball team and uh, those are the types of teams that I think are the toughest to play I knew the pedigree of Corey Seager when he came over here it's a great signing for Texas because I had the pleasure of covering him when he was in Los Angeles but I didn't know what we were going to get from Adolis Garcia and how much more gratifying is it Dayton to know that this was a kid that was DFA'd by the Cardinals the Rangers DFA'd him as well yeah. didn't clear waivers and, and or he did and then here we are and he leads the postseason in RBI I mean what a how impressed have you been with just his maturation and development well it's just you know the, you tell players this all the time that the only thing that matters is that they believe in themselves the, you know the scouts uh, managers, coaches, front office, all their opinions are important, but the most important opinion is the player's opinion of self. And the fact that this guy loves to play the game the way he does, and it just his desire to go out there and just be the best that he can is why he is where he is. I mean, he's that guy's going to play baseball until he's 40, 45. <laughs> I mean, he's going to play. And, and that's why he's in this position he's in. And regardless of whether he was DFA'd or somebody gave up on him, the fact that he loved to play so much that he just keeps going and keeps grinding and keeps getting better. And, uh, you know, he obviously has a, a flair for the dramatic. He loves being in the moment. He has great star qualities. And it's it's been fun to watch him compete. He's Cuban. Those are my people. Flair for the dramatic. <laughs> Uh, much better on the road in the postseason than at home. I mean, you've lost four home games in the postseason, yet you haven't lost a game on the road in three different spots. You've been very, very good on the road. How come? Give me a little feel of that as we get ready you know, for game Chris, three. Those things are always interesting to try to figure out. You know, you look at Houston this year and, you know, you know some of their struggles at home. And uh, you know, I think there's so many different factors that, that weigh into that. And, you know, some guys just, they like playing, you know, they like being on the road. They like just kind of be able to escape the, the routine of being at home and, and 
and, and just get away. And right. and other players, you know, they, they, they enjoy the environment at home, whether it's whatever. They've had success there in the past, and they feed off that. And the momentum, I mean, it's just hard to predict why some teams are more successful at home versus the road or vice versa. How do we get Simeon going? And do you think the fact he played 162 games of the regular season is, is kind of catching up to him? You know, I wouldn't say that. You know, he's he's one of the most incredible baseball players that I've been around. You know, watching his preparation and and you know who he is as a, a person and the the incredible routine he has uh, defensively and offensively every single day to prepare. I mean, that guy is uh, he's just so consistent and uh, really is a, a, the rock of of this team in my opinion. And uh, you know, just his stability. Uh, and you know, when when he goes, we go. And um, you know, he's he's going to get going. And, uh, you know, even though he's had some struggles, you know, in the batter's box, some of the plays he's made defensively have been, you know, they've changed the momentum. I mean, they've been big picker uppers for our team. Uh, and so he's going to do something every single day to help the team win. That's who Marcus Simeon is. How about you, Dayton, going from the Royals? You're from Kansas City, driving around the ballpark in 85 when I won a championship. That inspired <laughs> you to go back and bring one to him. You almost won two. And now you're here in sort of an advisor's role to Chris Young, a different feel for you, because it's not necessarily your team. You came here this year. Give yeah. me a little rundown on that for well, a second. Well, it's, it's been an honor, you know, to be with CY got so much respect for him and and who he is as a as a husband and as a father and certainly as a as an executive and uh, you know he's put together a great group of people and it took a lot of uh, you know I think just a lot of vision for him to to go get Boach and and to really motivate Boach to, to come out and be a part of this uh, it, it's been a joy to be with him and I, I, I got to give a lot of credit to all of our player development people too I mean you know what Ross Finstermaker's done and Josh Bonifay and uh, Kenny Holmberg and, and uh, Josh Boyd and Kip Fag, the scouting people that have put us in this position because if you remember, I mean, the deals that we had to make at the deadline were only possible without but know, those prospects. because of the farm system. Absolutely and right. those guys did an incredible job. And to, to, do, to see what CY did would repair this rotation the way he did. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of injuries. Montgomery and people like that. I mean, we had a lot, <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of injuries. Oh, yeah, yeah, he lost the ground right away. We repaired the entire rotation yeah. and add to the bullpen. And without the great work of our scouting and player development people, Can't do it. it's not possible. No and question. so I, I credit CY for continuing to, to push the throttle down and, and continue to make moves and, and put this team in a position to, to be where we are. Well, Dayton, you are three wins away from another World Series championship for you, but also the first in Texas Ranger history. Thank great? you so much for taking the time to be with us today. We appreciate it.